So Chuck, I got an explainer, but it's like a sports explainer. Uh oh. So we called in Gary because the two of you were my co-host for Star Talk Sports Edition. Okay. Yeah. I'm, is I'm that okay allowed? With that. Is, 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 uh, can we do that? Is there a rule against that? Are, are you trying to tell me we're going to stop the other ones? Because uh, <laughs> no, no. what's happening? What's going on? No. Okay. <laughs> so we, we're like mid-season of baseball right now. And mm -hmm. I just thought we should have a little chat about what people call a rising fastball. Rising Ooh. fastball. Very hard to hit. Very hard to hit. Because you see the ball coming in. And you're ready to swing for it, and you always swing underneath it. And because you think it's going to be somewhere where it isn't, of course, that's the whole point of what the pitcher's trying to do. The whole point is to fool the batter in whatever way they can. But I just wanted to focus in this particular moment on the rising fastball. So the batter describes the ball as rising, yeah. rising up from whatever, wherever they saw they thought it was going to be. And, but of course, Gravity doesn't work that way. <laughs> unless unless the pitcher is a Jedi. <laughs> ah. Gravity doesn't work that way. And old timers among us, old timer Americans, so Gary might not know this, back in the 1970s, mm -hmm. they lowered the height of the pitcher's mound to Ooh. give a better advantage to the batters. Right. And I forgot how much was it, six, it was just a few inches. And you why know, don't you just get shorter pitches? <laughs> that would be the same effect. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, you want short pitchers, but yeah. they're not easy to come by, right? Uh, you know, they, 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 some of the most dominating pitchers have all been tall. Randy and Johnson. Randy Johnson among them. Yeah, he was a giant. Mind you, you think about yeah. the length of lever that they're mm -hmm. able to bring to a pitch, and then you've got the vertical aspect and him stood on a mound, even if yes. he lowered it. Yes. <laughs> he, he, showed, he showed up for practice. They were like, you're in the wrong sport, man. <laughs> you're, in the wrong, you're in the wrong sport. The, the, uh, court, the basketball court's that way. <laughs> then they found out he couldn't jump. So I said, okay, you stay, stay right where you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, do you remember seeing that video of him pitching and he completely vaporized a pigeon that flew across the path? Yes, I That's saw right. that. Ooh, a pigeon yeah. flew across. And there was nothing left of nothing the pigeon. Left. That yeah. was that's a now that was I mean if you had to die, you know a Randy Johnson fastball, <laughs> completely so, hey, obliterating what the, your. What are the chances of that actually happening? What are those? Well, whatever those chances are, he it he happened. nailed it. It happened. <laughs> it happened. I tell oh, you, I, I, yeah. listen, he, that pigeon is more famous than the Sully <laughs> Captain Sully Sullenberger uh, geese. That's for sure. Right. 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 Yeah, there's basically – now, birds are not sturdy objects, right? They have to be no. light enough to fly. Yeah. Their bones are very fragile. The bones are basically hollow. Hollow. They're, they're they porous. have to be hollow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, they'd be um, – so if you take the energy of a Randy Johnson fastball and ask what happens when you deposit that much energy into a pigeon, there's basically mm -hmm. no pigeon left. And so right. that's you a, have that's a You have a feathered works. pillow. That's, that's, that's right, some pillow. <laughs> that's some feathers for a pillow. That's it. That's all that's So left. getting back to the rising fastball. So, uh, so here's the point. Uh, so in the 1970s, they lowered the mound. I think it was the mm. 70s. Yep, they lowered the mound to bring some advantage back to the batter so that the pitcher's not towering over you, plus with their fully outstretched arm, and they're pitching sort of down to you. All right, rather than straight at you. All right, so that mm -hmm. helped a little bit. But like you said, Gary, you know, a shorter pitcher would have had the same effect as lowering the mound. So, mm -hmm. um, so what it did, it, it put shorter pitchers at a disadvantage, okay, um, relative to taller pitchers where they didn't even make a difference. So right. make a long story short. As you know, you can put a spin on a ball, and as long as the ball is thrown through an atmosphere, such as right. what we have yeah. on Earth, then the arc of the ball will veer from what would be normal to the force of gravity, from what, force of, from what you'd expect, giving purely the force of gravity acting on the object, which is why you cannot have curveballs on the moon. Mm -hmm. It will not work. Okay, you cannot have rising fastballs on the moon. It will not work. All of these trajectory adjustments that are happening en route between the pitcher's release point and the catch and the batter, which is a little less than 60 feet, right? Um, uh, because the pitcher's arm is forward of the 
pitching rubber, and mm-hmm. it's the pitching rubber that's 60 feet, six inches from home plate. So it's really, you're talking about 58 feet, something, however, wherever their arm is at the point of release. So, and then of course the batter only has a fraction of a second to decide. So a lot of the batter's decision has to be, um, I don't want to call it intuitive, but it has to be what their native understanding of gravity is going to be, or their understanding of the pitcher, some combination of the two. Okay. So if you spin the ball with a backspin, so the top of the ball is spinning back towards you, okay? Mm-hmm. We'll call that a backspin. Yeah. Because for every backspin, there's a part of the ball that's moving forward, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so you have, to be, you have to specify what the top of the ball is doing. So if you throw the ball where the top of the ball has backspin, that will create a difference in air pressure between the bottom and the top of the ball. Mm-hmm. So, because the air moving across the top and the bottom has different speeds relative to the surface of the ball. So it speeds up, slows down, speeds up, slow down. Um, it's rotating. Well, well no, but, yeah, but um, yeah, it is rotating, same. but only one side of the ball will feel the same constant extra constant. force, okay? Right. Either it's constant more force or constant less force. All right, so I'm part of the ball. I'm going over the top. I'm moving. I'm, so how should we say this? So the the top of the ball is is spinning back towards the pitcher, okay? Mm-hmm. And the and the air is moving in that same direction across the top of the ball. Mm-hmm. So the so the relative speed between this top surface of the ball and the air moving across it. The difference between them is less than the bottom of the ball that's moving towards the batter. Okay? The bottom of the ball is moving towards the batter and the air is coming back across. So in one case, you add the spin speed to the ball speed. In the other case, you subtract it. And that difference creates a pressure difference between the top and the bottom. If you do that side to side, it'll move the ball left to right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pure and simple. We use these same techniques in soccer when, when you kick underneath or to the side or slightly over the top. Correct. That spin, that sort of Ex- magnus effect. The, the magnus effect, which, yeah. correct. That's what, that's what it's been so named. And so, um, so if you spin it backwards, mm-hmm. the ball will not descend as fast as gravity would otherwise take it. Mm-hmm. It still descends, but just not as fast. Okay, so yeah. you're there saying, okay, it's a regular fastball. I know how much it's going to drop between the bat, the pitcher's arm and when it crosses. So I'm going to swing where I know it will be. And that, that spin that the pitcher put on it kept the ball higher than it otherwise would. And generally you swing under the ball or you'll pop it up. And so, so if you look at the arc of the ball side to side, you will see the ball sinks. It does sink. Mm. Just not as much as the batter thinks it will. And Do you remember so it, a conversation we had with Ron Darling, the former Mets pitcher? Yes. Who's a TV commentator. And he was explaining to us how he would set certain hitters up for certain pitches later on in the game or later on in the season. Like he would throw some junk at them. So as he thought that they thought that that was going to be the case. And I think if you're going to throw this rising fastball, you have to set that hitter up earlier on in the game. Okay. So, 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 so you yeah. can bring that deception yeah. and disguise. So, so you're you messing, with their expecta- messing with their expectations. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So throw a regular fastball that's kind of a, a crappy regular fastball. So he doesn't want to swing at it, but he yeah. sees the arc yep, and right. says, yeah, well, okay, that's fastball. your fastball. I got this. We'll put, throw one over the middle and, and just see what I'll do with your fastball. That's all supposed right? to be the reason why you step out of the batter's box altogether. When people think, why does it take so long for a know, baseball game to a, unfold? A, yes. To, to unfold. <laughs> it, you know, it's like, I got here Tuesday and I miss work. <laughs> I miss work. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still here. But uh, it, the reason why they step out of the batter's box is because a lot of hitting is perception. Mm-hmm. And the idea is to clear your perception of the last pitch and hopefully any other pitches that you might have in mind 
and you walk out of the batter's, batter's box and you're supposed to take your gaze away from the mound. And, all, and now all you're this, fresh. Now you're fresh. And mm. all this stuff actually has a purpose. It's not like superstition. It, it, mm. it looks like these guys are being superstitious because a lot of times they'll add their own little, uh, you know, rituals, rituals. and rituals yeah, yeah. to it. Yeah, but, but, the, but, but Chuck, growing up, game, long games lasted two hours and many games lasted an hour 40. And now short games last two hours and they all last three hours. So well, I no, think yeah. advertisers. I was going to say, you yo, forgot about step commercials. out of the box. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, we need more commercial time. Yeah, commercial time. <laughs> Good. So, so, it, so what you might do is mix up a rising fastball with a sinking fastball, right? So now, now that you think you got my rising fastball figured out, I now throw a fastball that's spinning the other direction. And now the force on it pushes it down rather than up. And then you see, you've seen this because the center field camera picks it up. The ball comes, looks like it's coming straight at the batter and the bottom drops out of it. Mm. And the catcher act practically catches it on the ground. And the batter just swings over it and they've got it. So the point is, in a rising fastball, nothing rises. It simply doesn't fall as fast as your, as your psychology and your understanding of gravity would otherwise have you believe. Ha ha, it tricks you. Which, which, which in a way makes a, which in a way makes a curveball maybe a little easier because you're not, it's the, it's not moving against gravity. It's just moving left to right, or it's, it's got some arc that maybe you sort of, sort of follow the arc, you know, but, but all the, all good pitches are hard to hit. So right. it's, right. I don't want to jump in there and say I could do any better than the dude that just struck out. So well, you know, they, uh, some pitchers do the same thing though with an off speed pitch. Hmm. So it's like you just it's the same exact pitch. You just don't throw it as hard. You you throw it at Chuck speed, like eh. Chuck speed, and, uh, Chuck speed, a Chuck speed pitch. It's, it's called the Chuck speed pitch. You know what I mean? First, you blaze them with a 91 mile an hour, blaze them again. And then the second one, it's like, eh. and they're like, oh, what the hell just happened? All right. So, so, I, 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 so. Uh, but you should know that the faster you spin it, the right. bigger is the Magnus effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So because the difference in the relative speeds of the air moving across the ball surface becomes greater and greater. And so uh, the, the, some of the best pitchers, when they say, boy, they got a lot of movement on that ball. Yeah. Uh, it's because of how quickly they actually spin the ball as it releases from their, from their hand. But this is, isn't that when the hitters reach the, the, the stitching? And they read the 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 speed of rotation because they can tell from the the stitching whether it's blurred, whether there's certain things coming, what kind of pitch, and they've learned to read the the stitching. Yeah, if you're good. Yes. Well, you're in the, if you're in the majors, you're going to be decent, right? No, no I'm Who's saying the a batter? Batter? Spider Man. Who is batting no. here? Who's who, counting the who stitches? Oh my God! I only saw six stitches go by. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. So, so in the tenth of a second, I, or two tenths yeah. of a second, I have to decide. I would say, oh, there's three stitches, not four. It's it's coming from left to right, and it's dropping by three centimeters. I'm going to swing here, right, right. So, so anyhow, I just wanted to sort of reinforce uh, the value of a spinning ball, no matter whether it's a fastball or any other kind of pitch. Um, if it's spinning, the pressure differences will move it in ways that give the pitcher amazing control and, and deceptive power over the batter. Lastly, how about the knuckleball? Ooh. Ooh. So the knuckleball does not spin. Okay. Mm. Now, when you see that ball coming, you can see you can see that that there's not it's not spinning. All yeah. right. You just see now the problem there is, and we'll have to save this for another uh, segment at a, on another show. But if the ball is not spinning, it is not stabilized as it moves through the air. Yes. Mm. And the slightest. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> you're unstable. No, not emotionally oh, unstable. Yeah. Jesus Check. Christ. How many times can this happen? <laughs> ah! <laughs> you throw me. He throws me back. I can't take it anymore. I just. Check. <laughs> the ball, last I checked, experiences no emotions, right? It's oh, so... okay. okay. That, that okay. kind of stability. Okay. Ste <laughs> so, yeah, rotational stability. Rotational. So, no stability. So as it moves towards you, it's not rotationally stable against the air it's moving mm -hmm. through. And so yeah. a slight breeze will just carry the ball to a different yeah. place. 
And so for a knuckleball, especially the catcher, they don't know where the ball is going to end up. And, and it, a knuckleball is useless on a, on a day where there's no breeze. Okay. Mm. Then it'll just go in a straight arc. But if, there's, a, if it's kind of breezy, <laughs> yeah, if, if it's kind of breezy inside the stadium and, and, and sometimes it cooks around, you can look at the flags, but that doesn't tell you because those are up above the, the, the level, all mm -hmm. right, of the top of the stadium. So this circulating air um, can be the knuckleballer's best friend. And many knuckleballers are famous for throwing wild pitches or having passed balls because the batter doesn't know where the, I mean, the, the, the catcher doesn't know where to put the right. mitt as yes. the, as the ball moves around. So that is the absence of a spin also creating movement because we don't have a spin stabilized situation. And that's a whole other segment that we're going to do guys. That's all we have time for, but I'm loving the fact that our explainer videos are now spilling into the sports edition format. I'm loving it because there's a lot of explaining that needs to happen in sports too. You Just ain't saying. lying. <laughs> okay. Starting with this off season. Never mind. Never mind. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, Chuck, Gary, Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.